Welcome to Quant Concepts Education. This is a short 14 minute lecture on the introduction to regression analysis. It is assumed that the viewer has little background in statistics. Suppose you've been in the same dead end job for 10 years and finally decide that you need to skill up to improve your career. You consider enrolling into university in order to gain some valuable skills that will hopefully improve your job prospects. However, your friend Sam has some thoughtful advice for you. Mate, don't waste your time at uni. My mate Jimmy is a PhD and he's unemployed. Interesting. Sam continues. Rob never went to school and he's loaded with cash. Sam's advice sounds quite wise indeed. But upon further reflection, you realise that Jimmy is a kleptomaniac and is essentially unemployable. And Rob is rich because he won the lottery. But Sam has got you thinking. How do we know whether more education will improve your career? More importantly, does education increase your salary? How can we formally test whether there is a relationship between education and wages? More importantly, how much can we expect our wage to increase for every additional year spent on education? That is, is it even worth it to go and study? Education is expensive nowadays and reading hurts your brain. A natural experiment would be to survey a sample of individuals and ask each of them how much they earn and how many years they have spent in school and record this down, and then determine whether we can observe a pattern in their responses. Let's say you decide to survey 100 individuals. In statistics, it is important to make sure that our sample of individuals is representative of the population. That is, we must ensure random sampling. This will allow us to make inferences or conclusions about the population at large. Each individual's response will produce a data point. That is, our random sample of 100 individuals will produce 100 data points for us to estimate our regression. For example, our first data point is Sue. She has 13 years of education and is currently paid $20 an hour. Our second data point is Peter, with 20 years of education and an hourly wage of $30. And so on for the other 98 individuals in our sample. Now, given such data, what is the best way to present this information? It's a scatter graph. Let's begin with a simple XY graph. Education is on the X axis or the horizontal axis and zero is on the intersection point and increases as we move towards the right. Wages is on the Y axis or the vertical axis and zero is on the intersection point and increases in value as we move up. Each point on the graph denotes an individual who we have surveyed. For example, this first person in our dataset has 13 years of education and earns $20 an hour. Another person in our sample has 20 years of education and earns a wage of $30 an hour. The scatter graph allows us to present all individuals in our sample based on their combination of education and wage. Now, how can we determine the general pattern in the dataset? That is, can we observe any relationship between wages and education based on the points on our scatter graph? A natural way of uncovering a possible pattern or relationship is by drawing the line of best fit. The line of best fit is a line that best represents the general pattern in the sample. A regression line is simply the line of best fit for a given sample. Now, recall from high school maths that the equation of a line is y equals to mx plus b, where m is a gradient or the slope of the line, that is, rise over run, and b is the intercept of the line, that is, where the line cuts the y-axis. In regression analysis, we represent the line as y equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 x instead. All that has changed is the notation. Beta 0 is the intercept term and beta 1 is a gradient or slope of the line. In the context of this example, y is equal to wages and x is equal to education. Now, is there a relationship between wages and education? We can see this by observing beta 1, the slope of the regression line. If beta 1 is positive, then there is a positive relationship between wages and education. The more education a person attains, the higher the wage. Now, what happens if there is a negative relationship between wages and education? The data from our survey may look like this. We then draw the line of best fit, otherwise known as a regression line. 
As you can see, the regression line is now downward sloping from left to right. In this data set, the general trend is that the more educated an individual, the less they earn in wages. So when there is a negative relationship between wages and education, the slope of the regression line, beta 1, is negative. What happens if there is in fact no relationship between wages and education? If that is the case, our data may look like this. If we were to draw the line of best fit, the line would cut through the data as follows. Notice that the line of best fit is now a horizontal line. So when there is no relationship between wages and education, the slope of the regression line, beta 1, is 0. Recall that the gradient, rise over run, of a horizontal line is 0. Now let's take a look at how we can use a regression line to make predictions. Suppose we analyse our survey results for wages and education and estimate the following regression line. Again, beta 0 is the intercept term and beta 1 is a slope coefficient or gradient of the line. Many software packages such as Excel, eViews, Minitab, etc. can easily estimate a regression line for us. Now, suppose Excel estimates a regression line for us and informs us that the regression line is in fact y equals to 5 plus 1x or in this case, wages is equal to 5 plus 1 times the number of years of education. This tells us that beta 0, the intercept of the line, is 5. This means that the line cuts the y-axis at $5. Beta 1 is equal to 1, which means that the slope of the line is 1. Now let's make some predictions. Suppose we meet an individual who has just finished high school and has 12 years of education. She would like to make a prediction of her hourly wage. In order to estimate her hourly wage, we simply make education equal to 12 in the regression equation. Wages, or y, is then equal to 5 plus 1 times 12. This gives us a wage of $17 an hour. Suppose there is another individual who has 22 years of education, and he would like a prediction of his hourly wage if he were to enter the workforce today. Again, we simply let education equal to 22 in the regression equation. His expected wage is 5 plus 1 times 22. This gives him a predicted hourly wage of $27 an hour. So what can we say about the relationship between wages and education? For every one additional year of education, wages is expected to increase by beta $1 per hour. So in this case, beta 1 is equal to 1. This means for every one additional year of education, wages is expected to increase by $1 an hour. How do we interpret beta 0, the intercept term? When education is equal to 0, wages is expected to be beta 0 dollars per hour. In our case, beta 0 is equal to 5 dollars. So when education is equal to 0, wages is expected to be 5 dollars per hour. Beta 0 in the wages and education context may be interpreted as a minimum wage. If an individual had zero education, he or she is expected to at least get paid $5 an hour. I'd like to now introduce the idea of the residual term. Let's again look at our regression line for wages and education. As in the previous slide, it has been estimated and beta 0 is equal to 5 and beta 1 is equal to 1. Notice that we now have the estimated regression line and the actual data points. Remember, the regression line is used to make predictions of an individual's hourly wage based upon his or her level of education. The red data points represent the actual information gathered from our survey of 100 individuals. Suppose we meet Jasmine, who has 12 years of education. We then use our regression model to make a prediction of her hourly wage. As we saw in the previous slide, 5 plus 1 times 12 is equal to 17. So our prediction for Jasmine's wage is $17 an hour. However, Jasmine in fact actually earns $22 an hour and her data point sits above the regression line. The residual is a difference between the actual wage and the predicted wage. Specifically, it is the actual wage minus the predicted wage. So for Jasmine, her residual is $5. We saw that our wage prediction for Jasmine underestimated her actual wage by $5. Does this mean our regression model is wrong? The answer is no. 
Our regression model simply provides us with a prediction based on Jasmine's level of education. So it's our best guess at her hourly wage given her level of education. However, in reality, there are many other factors in addition to education that will affect Jasmine's hourly wage. Because these were not accounted for, they are contained in the residual term. That is, they will cause slight errors in our prediction. So the residual term contains other factors that affect wages but are not contained in the model. In the context of wages and education, other factors that may influence a person's wage are experience. The more work experience you have, the higher your hourly wage. IQ. The smarter you are, the faster you learn on the job and presumably the faster you get promoted and earn a higher wage. Or height. Did you know that studies have found that taller people tend to get promoted faster than shorter people? True story. Google height and salary to find out for yourselves. Okay, so what we've covered so far seems easy enough, yeah? Well, you now have a good foundation of regression analysis, and the other more advanced concepts will now make sense much more easily. Let's recap what we've covered so far. The regression line is simply the line of best fit. It is the line that best represents the general trend or relationship in the data. Beta 1 is the slope of the regression line. This is simply the gradient of the line, rise over run. It is interpreted as follows. A 1 unit increase in the x variable will lead to a beta 1 unit increase in the y variable. Beta 0 is the value of the y variable when x is equal to 0. In our example today, it is the expected wage when an individual has zero education. If beta 1 is larger than 0, then there is a general positive relationship between x and y. That is, when x increases, y tends to also increase. If beta 1 is less than 0, then there is a general negative relationship between x and y. That is, when x increases, y tends to decrease. If beta 1 is equal to 0, then there is no relationship between x and y. If x changes in value, this has no effect on the value of y. We also showed how a regression can be used to make predictions of y, based on our information about x. In this lecture, we estimated the following regression line. Now, if we meet an individual with 12 years of education, we can make a prediction about this person's wage by simply setting education equals to 12 in the regression. 5 plus 1 times 12 is equal to 17. Therefore, our predicted hourly wage for this individual is $17. Of course, predictions aren't perfect, and our prediction may be slightly off. The residual is the actual value of y minus the predicted value of y. For example, our predicted wage for someone with 12 years of education is $17. However, the actual wage may in fact be $22 an hour. This means, using this regression, our individual has a residual equal to $5. Why do we have errors in our regression predictions? Because the regression model does not account for all factors that affect the y variable. In reality, there are an infinite number of potential factors that impact a person's wage. The residual term represents all other factors, other than those included in the regression model, that also impact y. In the case of wages and education, our regression model did not include the person's experience, IQ, height, ability to network, or whether he's a kleptomaniac. These factors are thus included in the residual and will prevent our predictions from being perfectly accurate. I hope you've enjoyed today's lecture please visit us at www.quant-concepts.com.